Hey, how are you? I am back in New York, back with my guy, Lodge. Hey. And today on Whoa That's Weird, we are gonna be sampling some vegan barbecue buffalo wings. Yes. And some vegan crab rangoons. We're at a place called Red Bamboo. Uh, that looks, that looks ooh, great. Ooh, I mean, looks good. It does have a sauce, but I'll go, I'll go bare bones. <laughs> I'm gonna bear back the rangoon. They replaced cream cheese with soy paste. I don't know, let's try the wings. Okay. The texture is like um, like a saucy nerf. And uh, this That's is the, the bone. bone. A stick. This episode's kind of weak. I mean, this isn't even that weird. It's just soy product on a stick. I gotta be honest, I thought this might be like one of those New Year resolution shows. So, no. I mean, this is probably healthy, but it's certainly not making me happy. If you don't mind, I got a guy in the East Village that'll smoke us a goat's neck right now. You got a guy who smokes goat necks? I always have guys who smoke goat necks. Why are we eating this bullshit? Get the fuck out of here. Whoa, whoa, that's weird. All right, this is it. Ducks Eatery, uh, 12th, fuck the ducks. 12th Street and 1st Avenue. I called the guy Will Horowitz, he's the owner, sometimes chef, told him we did some vegan stuff, it wasn't enough. He said he was gonna take care of us. Let's go rip some throats. Throats off some goats. Goat throats. It's nice and moist. It's nice and moist. Just how you guys like your goat neck. The goat neck started real simple. Basically, we, uh, we had a bunch of butchers and they had too many goat necks and they didn't have a way of selling them. Okay. And so what we practice here is kind of this old style of cooking of like, hey, uh, let's, uh, let's take something that's cheap, it's still from good farms and good places, but let's figure out how to smoke it, ferment it, braise it, and make it more valuable. And we do that by making it really fucking delicious. Take a marinade of a homemade curry and uh, a whole slew of different other spices and sauces and stuff and fish sauce and we marinate the necks for about two days before we throw them in this oak smoker here. And we smoke them for about eight hours and we stick them back in the marinade and braise them for another few hours and we finish them right up here with the same marinade from the get-go but nice and reduced into a pretty thick jus. Large, Donnie. This is one goat neck. Should we just kind of dig in, right? Oh, Jesus, yeah, you don't need a knife. I mean, it just falls right off the throat. All right, this looks like a solid first bite. Yeah, yeah, cheers. That is fantastic. Mmm. It's like a great, great pork shoulder. And the crazy thing is that probably more than 50% of the people watching this video have never tried goat. It is the second most consumed protein in the world behind pork. But you're right, nobody does it in the United yeah. States. I think pork and chicken are number one. It's kind of like in a, like America, people only care about the big four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. And they only care about the big four meats pork, beef, chicken, lamb. They don't give goat the shine I think I think it deserves. So goat's the rugby of meats. Yeah, yes. I like that comparison a lot. You're welcome. That is the spinal column coming straight from the skull of the goat on down. <laughs> yep. There's gonna be a ton of marrow coming out from the from the spine here, and that's like the nature's, that's nature's butter. I really wanna get in on that. You wanna get in there? Yeah, because I'm gonna put it on the bread. All right, we're going for a nice scoop of the marrow. Oh wow, I think I actually, you know what? Right we're, we're, we're cracking vertebrae today. That's nice. They don't call me the chiropractor for nothing. Actually, no one calls me the chiropractor. All right, I think this is a nice little piece of marrow. Put it on the sourdough bread. I love it. Yeah. You love it? No, I mean, this I is could, no bullshit. This, this is a fucking solid meal, right? I honestly think I could take down one of these on my own. And there's actually still a lot of meat on this neck. Yeah, I think we turn it around. There's actually a lot of meat. Oh, wow. Hey, look at, hey, look at that. that. That's dark. He's involved. He's got one more dish for us just because you knew it was a cold day. Mm -hmm. Bring it out soon. So we made up something else a little special. Now, we won't be offended if you don't eat all this, but this is uh, from a beaver that we shot about a year and a half ago. And uh, we, we, for a lot of our beef, yeah, a lot of our beaver and squirrel and stuff, we uh, will make like jerky almost out of it. And this is an old, old school style of like Brunswick stew. 
and that's like typically what you would find like a lot of old school like hunter suits and things sure. like that. Yeah. So we made that with some uh, beaver and some homemade curry with a little bit of sourdough and seaweed. Now I just have a question about squirrels. Squirrels of meat I've never tried. I've always, I've, I have like a vendetta against squirrels. <laughs> They've broken into my home uh, numerous times. How do they taste? Because I've just, I've been meaning to sink so, my teeth in so a squirrel. I'd say squirrel and snapping turtle are like the great unsolved mysteries of like the food world. People don't even realize. It's like imagine, imagine you know like if you look at like a good Iberico ham, what are they feeding them? Acorns, right? Acorns, These right. are little like meat candy that are hopping tree to tree just eating acorns, acorns all day. So they're incredible. I am going back to my parents' house this weekend and it's gonna be a squirrel massacre. Squirrel Mageddon. So this is beaver stew. I think when you're eating beaver, you know it. Definitely a lot more gamey than the goat. It's good. Yeah. It's hearty. It's very flavorful too. Like a mulligatawny or something. You know, it's not every day that you can say, hey, my chef shot the food that I'm eating right now. Well, we ate a beaver that was a year and a half old. Oh God, I didn't mean to say that out loud, right? You're right, this isn't, this yeah. isn't necessarily uh, hunting grounds to table. This is hunting grounds to fridge for a year and a half. Freezer, hopefully. For a year and a half. Guys, how's that tasting? This right? is this is honestly well, this is fantastic. It's I was very bad, right? I was very, very impressed with the mm -hmm. goat. I'm equally impressed with this. Yeah, we got all sorts of crazy stuff we're doing and, and uh, yeah, what's uh, what's your guys' tolerance for anything else? I can do whatever. Yeah, I have good. a high tolerance. I pretty much my tolerance is I won't eat human or dog. So this looks laughably ridiculous after all those things. Right. But so, I made you guys a hot dog. So I want you guys to give this a good try. It's just relish and a little good old fashioned deli mustard. And it's our own homemade smoked dog, okay? Smoked dog. Smoked dog. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I remember the list. Not, oh, so now, oh, so now this is a smoked carrot. A smoked carrot. Hey, what? This this episode is going full circle. It is. We start off that. vegan, then we go deep, deep into the meat, uh, yeah. and now we're ending back vegetarian. You're welcome. Right. I like this. Follow yeah. Me to the fucking pits of hell. A little smoked carrot, so a little bit of relish, and a little bit of uh, just brown deli mustard. Here we go. I'm embarrassed to say that that's fucking delicious. A guy who's been yep. a carnivore for a long time, and obviously we had a lot of meat. This is a, it's an excellent way to get your vegetables. Yeah. And we, um, what we do is we actually ferment them. Okay. And then we, uh, and then we smoke them, and then we age them, pretty much like a salami or something, you know? So, you know, that's the fun thing about it, is that we're not doing something to us that's normal, because we've been doing that for a million years with meats. Like, that's where I think maybe the vegan restaurant has it wrong. They're trying to invent all these types of fake chicken, fake cream cheese. It's like, nature has given you enough vegetables that you can get creative and find a way to make those vegetables taste like meat. For us, it's this idea of, uh, of instead of doing you know meatless options that are uh, made in a laboratory somewhere to look like they bleed. That's exactly what we just he, did. I think he exactly nailed it. Yeah, just do what uh, God gave you and just try to smoke it, you know? <laughs> that's what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. You're the fucking best. I think this is, I'll put this to the side. A little bit of salmon candy. So I think one of y'all wanted it. I did, yeah, yeah. We take the bellies and we uh, just cure them and smoke them with a little bit of uh, dark, dark maple syrup. Would this be a palate cleanser of sorts? I, I think it's almost dessert, it's dessert. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to sound sophisticated. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. So a maple syrup is only no brown sugar, no nothing. I'm it's so excited syrup. for this, actually. Wow. Mm. Very good, too. It's wow. a fucking home run. Right? Yeah, we have hit all, all the bases. So, Donnie, I think things got sufficiently weird tonight, right? Whoa, that's weird. Really fucking weird. Holy fucking shit. Whoa, whoa, that's weird. Really fucking weird. Holy fucking shit.